David and David here, let's talk about why your iPhone is so slow. A lot of people say that iPhones get slower with age, and that's true to some extent, but a lot of the time it has something to do with the software on your iPhone. And if a piece of software, otherwise known as an app, if an app malfunctions, then that can rev the CPU up to 100% or fill up the RAM or do something to create a bottleneck so that everything else slows down on your iPhone. So. The real fixes for this are either in the settings app or we look at the individual apps that might be causing the problem. So the first question is to ask yourself, is this happening with every app that I use on my iPhone or is it only happening in a specific app? If it's only happening in a specific app, probably uninstall the app, reinstall it. But let's dive in. Yeah, so let's talk about background app refresh first. Mm -hmm. Background app refresh allows certain apps to download new content in the background of your iPhone when you're not using your iPhone. So in addition to the cellular data issues that this can present, it can also slow down your iPhone, especially if one of the apps that you have is using this, maybe misusing this background app refresh feature. Yeah, so let's open up the settings app. I will scroll down and tap general, and then we'll tap on background app refresh. Here you have a list of all the apps that can download new content in the background of your iPhone. And ask yourself, do I want the books app to be able to do that? Yeah, and let's just briefly mention the top setting there. We don't recommend turning off background app refresh completely, but we do re recommend setting it to Wi-Fi. Yeah, so if you just tap on that, just make sure the check mark is next to Wi-Fi and not Wi-Fi and cellular data. Let's go back to background app refresh. So to just go through this list of apps, which ones don't you need to have downloading new content in the background, you know? It's pretty much every app Pretty much, list. Pretty much every app, you know, notes. But I think like stocks, you know, stocks pre-installed on your iPhone. I don't own any stocks. I don't need that app to the, I don't even need the app on my iPhone, really. But. You don't need you know, you need money. You're past that. Yeah. Let's talk about the next thing. That's clearing up some storage space. Yeah. Somebody wants a 401k plan. I get it, David. Okay. So your iPhone has a solid state drive, but if the storage space becomes filled up, then your operating system doesn't have enough room on the hard drive to work. This is either we can get really technical with this, David, or we can just tell you how to fix it. Let's just yeah, skip let's go, to the fixes. Uh, go back. And then right above background app refresh is iPhone storage. Check this out. See what is taking up all your storage space. I went through this morning and cleared out some stuff. Uh, one thing that Apple recommends is deleting your recently deleted album. I had like two gigabytes of photos that I had deleted, but they were still stuck in that recently deleted for 30 days. Yep. Just clear that out now. Save some immediate gigabytes. Also, software updates can, can be pretty big. Yeah, software updates a lot of the time. Five gigabytes now? Four? Yeah. It's pretty crazy how big they're getting. And when you look down here and you see 64 gigabytes used, the old rule of thumb for PCs was to have twice the amount of RAM on your PC available on the hard drive. So if you had four gigabytes of RAM, you wanted to have at least eight gigabytes of storage. iPhones are a little bit more advanced than that. But I think a good rule of thumb is, you know, be sure that you have at least two gigabytes of storage available and you should be fine. This should not be the bottleneck. Yes, you know, you can see for me, it's probably the same for you. Photos is, is the big, big killer here. Yeah, definitely. But sometimes it's like a game. Actually, for me, it's my golf app mm -hmm. because I have like tons of slow motion swings that who knew took up tons of data. You can just scroll down here and see which apps are taking up the most. If you see any that are abnormally large, you can tap in here, books. You know, maybe you want to offload the app. Maybe it's an app you don't really use that much anymore. You don't need it on your iPhone. Tap offload. Yep. Offload app. The next thing we want to recommend is checking for an iOS update. Yep, Apple will regularly release these updates. Fix some bugs, can speed up your iPhone. Yep. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to general, and tap on software update. So iOS 14.5 is available. Well, we are beta developers, and uh, iOS 14.6 Developer Beta 1 yep. is available. You probably won't see that on your iPhone unless you're also a developer. Yeah, but if you go back here, if you see an update available, tap download and install. Yeah. Uh, good idea to update your iPhone whenever there's an update available. If you're a developer, though, and your iPhone is slow and you're watching this video, you should understand that beta versions are often slower than the ones that they release because they have all sorts of extra stuff built into them. The next thing we're going to talk about is widgets. Widgets are those little mini apps that run your iPhone. With iOS 14, you can add you know, the more interactive widgets right to the home screen. Uh, but if you add a whole bunch of widgets, you can slow down your iPhone. Right. Capacity. We're talking about bottlenecks, CPU, RAM, stuff going on in the background of your iPhone. Let's check out widgets. Yep, so I'm going to go back to the home screen. just going to swipe up here. So as you can see on my home screen right now, I have the weather widget and the calendar widget. And then if I swipe left to right, I've got a couple more widgets here. And you can see I've got calendar in both spots. Probably don't need that. So press and hold on the widget you want to remove. And then just tap remove widget. And then tap remove. Brilliant. Yep. Let's talk about battery life real quick. 
because the battery section of the settings app is a great place to go. Why? Because usually things that are slowing down your iPhone are also you know, using a lot of resources and using a lot of battery life. So sure. let's head to the battery section of the settings app and see if we can identify any culprits here. Yep, so I'll swipe left to right, tap on settings. We're still in software updates, so tap back to general, upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to settings, and then tap on battery. There it is battery. This could also be called slowing down your iPhone. So I'm just going to scroll down here. Twitter, 31%. Exposure notifications, 21%. My exposure notifications really uh, does a lot to my battery. Well, that's the same. And slows down your iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way that it's using battery life and not slowing down your iPhone. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm going to keep it until we kind of get through the pandemic. But once the pandemic's over, exposure notifications has got to go. Good it's for always, always in the top. It's and it's, it's a little frustrating. Next, let's talk about mail settings. If you have push turned on on your iPhone, your iPhone's going to be constantly asking, is there mail? Is there mail? Is there mail? If you switch it to fetch, it's going to ask every 15, 30, or 60 minutes. Your iPhone's doing less. It's going to speed up. Yeah. So we'll tap back to settings, upper left-hand corner of the screen. And then come down and tap on mail, tap accounts, and then tap fetch new data. Right at the start, you've got push turned on at the top of the screen. Turn off that switch. And then down here underneath fetch, you can fetch manually, hourly, every 30 minutes, every 15 minutes. I don't really use mail on my iPhone all that often, so 30 minutes is fine for me. It's great. The iPhone expert doesn't use mail. Everybody's an idiot except for me. Well, it's true. Important to keep in mind, too, that anytime you open the mail app, it's going to fetch those new emails. So you don't have to wait 30 minutes. So now I think we're going to get into some of the more specific app issues that can cause your iPhone to slow down. First, and don't yell at me, people. Close out your apps. People are saying this should never you know, be a thing. You should never have to close out your apps. And I agree, you should never have to close out your apps. Certain apps will rev the CPU up to 100% and get stuck and crash. Apple isn't going to admit this, but it's the truth. How do we close out our apps, David? Yeah, so if you have an iPhone with a home button, double press that home button, that'll open the app switcher. If you have an iPhone 10 or newer, anyone with a face ID, click from the bottom to the center of the screen, hold your finger there, and now you're in the app switcher. Indeed. And then you just swipe it up and off the top of the screen. Closes the apps. Closes the apps. Yep. Shouldn't have to do it, but it's a good idea. Yep. If that doesn't work, check for an app update. Maybe the developer caught a bug. They're going to issue an app update, fix the problem. Right. So I'm going to tap out of uh, the app switcher and go to the app store. Tap app store. Tap on your account icon, upper right-hand corner of the screen. And then come down here to upcoming automatic updates. Here you'll see a list of your apps with updates available. I just like to tap update all. Get them all done at once. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Efficient. Doesn't like to go through and tap update on each individual yeah. one. Yeah. Mr. So, efficiency. Yeah. But wait, there's more. Update the app. Still slow. Yeah. Delete and reinstall. Delete and reinstall the app if that's the problem. Safari. Big problem for a lot of people because especially when people don't understand how tabs work, they can end up with a thousand open tabs in their iPhone. Yep. And your iPhone is really fast, but it really isn't built for a hundred tabs that are open. To fix this really easily, we can just go to the settings app, right? Yep. Yeah, let's do so that. let's go back to the app switcher. I'm going to switch back to settings, tap on settings, tap back on accounts, upper left hand corner of the screen, tap back on mail, tap back to settings, and we're going to come down here to Safari. Scroll down and then tap clear history and website data. Right. Clearing will remove your history your cookies and other browsing data. Cookies, in this case, if you've gone to Pandora and you haven't logged in and you have a playlist, the cookie is what's saving the playlist, it's gonna be gone. Your playlist is gone. Somebody yelled at me at the Apple Store once. They called me an idiot because I fixed their computer but also deleted their Pandora playlist. Yeah, but if you have you know passwords saved, it's not gonna just delete those passwords, it'll still be saved. Right, and shopping cart, if you're logged in, it'll be saved. If you're not logged in, it's gonna be empty pretty much an okay idea to do this. It's kind of like a reset for the browser. Do it. Yep, just tap clear history and data. There you go, it'll be grayed out after you do that. If you've done all these tips and your iPhone is still slow after a few days, give it a few days a week, it's time to reset all settings. But before you do, Listen to what David has to yeah, say. Yeah, so this resets everything in the settings app to factory defaults. Your Bluetooth devices are gone. Wi-Fi password's gone. See wallpaper it. gone. If you've watched our nine iPhone settings turn off now video, those are going to get sent back to factory defaults. So be very certain that your iPhone is slow yeah. and it's not like a specific app or anything because yep. this is going to essentially it's going to set everything back to factory defaults. Factory defaults, right. And, but it is going to make your iPhone faster. Let's tap back to settings, upper left-hand corner of the screen. Scroll up and tap general. 
come down here to reset and then tap reset all settings. You'll be asked to enter your password. Confirmation pop-up will appear saying, do you sure you want to do this? And you tap reset all settings and then the reset will happen. Phone reboots and hopefully it's faster. Last thing is really not a fix that we could do except recommend upphone.com slash phones. Get a new iPhone. Every year, Apple releases a brand new processor. iPhone processors are tremendously fast. So part of the reason to get a new iPhone, since a lot of the time older iPhones hardware is still solid, is that it's just zippier. Mm -hmm. You're on iPhone 4 still. It's <laughs> time. It might be time it's to time. get a new phone. That's what to do when your iPhone is slow. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and make sure you're subscribed. I have a personal request. Only 7% recently, yeah, up from 4, up from 4% of the people who watch our videos subscribe, please. Subscribe. Let's get that number to 9%. We're going to 9%. 9%. 9%. Leave a comment down below if any of your questions. Once again, thanks, thanks. for watching.